Hello everybody, it's the Alco Diesel Guy with another review for you. I decided today I was going to do a train set. I haven't done one of these in a while and I've had this sitting around for a while. I finally got around to it. Anyway, t as you can see, the review is going to be of the Coastliner. It's a somewhat sparsely equipped train set with basically two container cars as we see, a caboose and a GP40 locomotive. Anyway, let's get right to it and get this thing open. Uh, I must also note before I go any further, again, this train set is not designed for kids. Uh, operating age is again 14 years and up as we see by the little disclaimer written on the side there. We are also cautioned that this is an electric product, so again, the usual caution with working with electricity must be exercised when utilizing this product. We also see that the box is very bright and vibrant, with a very beautiful scene depicting a train running on the coast, which I guess makes sense. But please remember this is a Bachman, so one needs to temper their enthusiasm, or curb their enthusiasm, etc. As high quality is not one of the company's strong points, let's get her open and see what she's got. Once we remove the cellophane wrapping in which the set is contained in, we can then get access to the box itself. The trains themselves are stored in their own separate plastic sort of container, and the tracks come in a cardboard container. The back of the box makes a good effort in jump-starting our imaginations as to what we might be able to do with this train set. Unfortunately, the plans for this particular train set is somewhat limited, as the track as we see is limited to a very simple circle. The obvious goal of all this promotion is to get the end user and or operator of this train set to dream about expanding it. And of course, what better place to turn than Bachman itself for all the tracks and accessories one would need to develop these layouts. Now let's take a good look at the locomotive and rolling stock. As you can see, they come packed in this white plastic packaging thing, for lack of a better term. They are again, all the pieces are again in CSX blue with the gold trim. Again, the lettering done in gold as well. I must note the rolling stock was well packed, with everything showing up in pretty much perfect shape. To get the rolling stock and locomotives out of the packaging, we first need to remove the cellophane, which again seems to be spread around in abundance to keep the trains safe inside the packaging and to stop them from getting any ideas of falling out. And let's give the GP40 a close-up. We can't help but be attracted to the colors. The gold and the blue really sets it off. But again, make no mistake about it, this is traditional Bachman with, all, with somewhat of a cheap drive system. In fact, cheaper than one might expect, as we'll find out later on. As I noted, most things showed up perfectly, but not everything. As we see in this next shot, the locomotive itself had a problem with its front coupler. It somehow got jammed open during shipment, beyond its normal range. I was able to correct this pretty simply, but still a bit of a blemish on an otherwise perfect delivery. I should also note that the locomotive actually has the metal coiled spring couplers, not the plastic ones like on the rolling stock. Again, a nice shot of the side profile of this locomotive. And the rear of the locomotive. Nice little effect, they have the classification lights painted in red there. Only the top, front, and back headlights function. Again, the front classification lights do not function much like the rear. Another annoying feature is this hole below the pilot, as we see right there. This is done to make it easier to work on the coupler. Again, this is a train set designed for beginners, but nonetheless it does take away from the actual model's realism itself. We also note the underside is somewhat lacking in detail, and we also note that the, wire pickup, the wheel pickup system is done with wheel wipers. Now let's get a good look at one of the flat cars with its container load. Again, there are two of these slats included, one with these blue containers, the other with the white containers. As we see, it's pretty basic. Although well detailed, we see it has plastic wheels and on the coupler, and this is another annoying short sight that I can't stand, or oversight, it features a plastic sprung coupler, no coil spring. Again, these are pretty much doomed to fail almost immediately. This is probably Bachmann's worst invention next to the ring motor drive system. And now let's get the other flat car out for a close-up. Again, this one has the white containers instead of the blue containers as before. Again, the paint looks very bright and vibrant on it, but it has the same shortfalls. The infamous plastic sprung couplers and plastic wheels. The fact that the wheels are not shiny gives away the fact that they are in fact plastic, not metal. Again, the lettering is nicely done, very sharp paint, t typical with the way the Bachmann does its trains. 
And again, another close sh shot of, again, that infamous plastic sprung coupler. Underside has somewhat limited detailing, but there is some there. Better than nothing, but still, kind of underwhelming. And now let's take a look at the caboose. Nothing really fancy here again. This is essentially the same standard caboose that Bachman has had in production since the 80s, only in this case with a mild update. It now has knuckle couplers, again plastic sprung, yet again. Honestly, the most notable difference between this and its 80s predecessor is the fact that the couplers are now body mounted, not truck mounted. And now let's take a look at the other main part of the packaging, which is for the tracks and the instructions as well as the power pack. As you can see, nothing too, too fancy here. Instructions are curled up in a ball above the turns. We also note at this point that all the tracks are, well, turns. As I mentioned before, this layout is a simple circle, with even the power track being a curve, which also doubles as the railer. The instructions, along with the special power plug that connects to the power pack itself, no screws required, it actually literally connects directly in. This is a nice little touch that Bachman came out with, I want to say, more than 10 years from now, about 14 years. The tracks, as we see, are pretty basic. They are easy track, but they are steel. They are not nickel silver. The power pack is, again, the more up-to-date variation that actually locks physically under the off position when the throttle has been reduced to zero. We also note the adapter plug stored on the side here. Anyway, that'll be enough of that. Let's start getting everything set up and see how this set runs. Open the plastic that stores the cable and we start to take the tracks out of the box. Another note on the tracks, they are well secured using these plastic tie down strap things. They do a good job as none of these tracks were actually damaged when they arrived. I always have and always will take issue with Easy Track in its quality and overall design. It does at least live up to its name. To get the track together, we simply take two separate sections, align the fish plates or connectors, and simply push them together. The rail joiners draw most of my criticism, again, much like any HO scale track. This is the joining point of where the sections go together, so should the track wobble, and it will because the lock does not hold it firmly in position, the tracks will slowly but surely wear out their metal rail joiners, requiring, requiring them to be replaced, something that can easily throw up a stumbling block to a new model railroader who has just bought this train set and is setting it up for the first time. Another concern is to make sure the joining point is smooth. If it is not and there is a bump, it can send the train flying off the track when it hits the area. Being an experienced model railroader, it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to get the actual train layout together, with a few minor tweaks being required of the tracks to make sure they were joined correctly, and to connect the power pack itself up. Goof Proof gives a perfect definition of this actual controller. You simply put the red plug into the two track connection, and then as we'll see, we connect the actual transformer slash power pack into the, into the other well-defined connection located on the opposite side of the actual controller. Before we plug the actual power pack in, we connect the red two-track cable to the actual curved terminal re-railer, as it's known as. This is a goof-proof connection again, as there is no wrong way to put it in. The two prongs will work in either direction. Simple plug design has been a trademark of Bachmann since the 1980s. And now let's get started getting the train on the track. To re-rail the locomotive, we simply place it roughly onto the rails and gently pull it back and forth across the re-railer until the wheels drop into position. Once the locomotive slides back and forth without any hesitation and smoothly, we know we have it on the track. We repeat the same procedure to get the flat cars and the caboose on the rails. Once we are sure that all the wheels are on the tracks of all the cars, it's time to couple them together. We simply push them together and the knuckle couplers will engage automatically, or at least they should. Again, these are plastic sprung, so they are not known for reliability or working effectively. We've coupled all of the cars together and have plugged our transformer into the wall. It's time to go ahead and give this train a test run. We simply turn the knob to start the locomotive on its way. You see the direction controls on the top, and the throttle is the middle knob in the center that you see me turning to adjust the speed. Those speed operations aren't anything great. It has an okay crawl speed, but when we turn the speed up,
quickly begin to realize the difference between the cheap train set and a good train set. The locomotive itself makes a lot of racket running along, making an endless, annoying whining noise. When we further increase the speed, well, it, that makes things from bad to worse. And while this locomotive is a DC model, it is in fact what the DCC locomotive model is based upon. All they do is simply put a DCC decoder in it. I guess this is why Bachman doesn't market its DCC equipped locomotives as silent DCC. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> All joking aside, let's give this set a try in reverse, something that's always been a challenge for some basic sets, and... Well, it does appear to work pretty well. I guess I have to give Bachman some credit here, as most HO scale sets from the 80s and even the 90s had a tendency to just go flying off the rails if one made any attempt to run them in reverse at all. While it's true that these locomotives were never the most expensive thing around, they never whined or wailed quite this much at speed. So needless to say, Curiosity killed the cat, and I had to open the locomotive up to see exactly what was inside, and exactly how Bachman managed to make a so-so locomotive, well, just plain terrible. Get in, we first remove the fuel tank from the underside of the locomotive to expose the two screws that hold the shell on. We need just a Phillips head screwdriver to remove them. Once we've removed the screws fully from the chassis, the shell will come right off. One thing I have to note here, as we see when I remove this last screw, there was this weird shred of plastic. This apparently was caused by the screws being over-tightened at the factory. The shell will now simply lift right off the chassis, exposing the new drive system, and we immediately see what the problem is. The same motor that was in my toys from the 90s, it was loud then and has only gotten worse with age. As you can see, the drivetrain is standard Bachman, no worm gear covers with fully exposed worm gears and plastic mounting points, and very cheap drive shafts known for snapping. The top has a standard light board, no DCC readiness. The trucks are mounted, you can see how flimsy those mounts are with the trucks as they are very easily flexible. I doubt this locomotive would survive anything more than a very basic derailment without severe damage. Note the wiring is a bit of a shoddy job with wires kind of strung over the motor there. It might be required, but it still just looks kind of really cheaply put together. But then again, it is Bachman. Anyway, before this thing disintegrates in my hands, let me get this shell back on and put the screws back in place. As I put this thing back together, I must dig my heels in on quality control. A lot of people have complained in the past that I'm kind of harsh on these models. Well, that's kind of the point of this review. If a model and or, in this case, train set is built cheaply and then sold cheaply, that's one thing. But the issue with Bachman, especially as of late, is that they continue to build their products much cheaper, but then jack the prices up. Essentially, you pay top dollar for stuff that isn't really worth anything. And unfortunately, most new model railroaders may not be aware of this. That's one of the reasons why I constantly point this out. And this is definitely the case with this particular model. The original retail price of this set back, oh, I want to say, as little as about a year or two ago, was somewhere around $140. And considering how minimalistic it is, that's kind of steep. Again, we're talking about a simple ring of, nic of non-nickel silver track, steel track, a locomotive, and two cars. Big deal. So if you're wondering what this big rant is working up to, well, <laughs> the new retail price of this set, hang on to your brake wheels, is actually going for $240. That's right, $240 frickin' dollars for a locomotive that whines like it wants to be desperately put out of its misery. Some nicely detailed flat cars, but with, again, plastic wheels and plastic sprung couplers, and a cheap caboose that has not been updated since the 80s, with the exception of a body-mounted coupler that happens to be a knuckle. Oh, gee. My cup runneth over. As if that wasn't enough, and it certainly was, all you get for tracks is a very simple circle with with non-nickel silver track, just basic steel alloy track, just to really rub in how cheap this set is. I'm now definitely going to have to look into one of Walter's train line train sets to see if they offer any more value. But at $240, definitely stay away from this thing. Don't buy it at that price. It is just not worth it. Another example of Bachman charging way too much for way too little. And that'll about do it for this review. If you liked it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down, subscribe. And of course, again, thank you for watching and keep the metal side down.